Great day everybody, welcome to Skill Up Dimension. Today we got here another video from audio software called Audacity and in today's video I would like to show you how to use reverb or what does it actually do. So first of all let's just again trim the audio to the default so Ctrl plus T. So basically Ctrl plus A to select all audio and then go to effects and click on the reverb. Here you can see the all settings of the reverb. But basically what reverb is, reverb adds what is basically rapid modified repetition blended with the original sound that gives an impression of ambience. So basically let's say you can use it for something similar to an echo but not too much. The reverb effect is based on the original freeverb algorithm. Adding reverberation is something desirable for concert halls that are too small or contain so many people that the whole natural reverberance is diminished. So applying a small amount of stereo reverb to an untreated mono signal duplicated into a two channel stereo track will usually make it sound more natural. Okay, so but what actually those things in reverb does? So the room size sets the size of the simulator room. 0% is like it's closet and 100% is like huge cathedral or large auditorium. A high value will simulate the reverberation effect of a large room and a low value will simulate the effect of a small room. The pre-delay in milliseconds delays the onset of the reverberation for the set time after the start of the original audio. This also delays the onset of the reverb tail. The maximum pre-delay is 200 milliseconds, but be careful, adjustment of this parameter can improve the clarity of the result. The reverberance sets the length of the reverberation tail. This determines how long the reverberation continues for after the original sound being reverb comes to an end, and so simulates the liveliness of the room acoustics. For any given reverberance value, the tail will be greater for larger room sizes. Nextly we get damping. Increasing the damping produces a more muted effect. The reverberation does not build up as much and these high frequencies decay faster than the low frequencies. It simulates the absorption of high frequencies in the reverberation. So tone low. The setting this control below 100% reduces the low frequency components of the reverberation creating a less, let's say, boomy effect. On the other side, tone hide, uh, setting this control below 100% reduces the high frequency components of the reverberation creates a less bright effect. The wet gain applies volume adjustment to the reverberation, also called wet. A component in the mix. Increasing this value relative to dry gain, what is right below, increases the strength of the reverb. The dry gain applies volume adjustment to the original dry audio in the mix. Increasing this value relative to the wet gain. Reduces the strength of the reverb. If the wet gain and dry gain values are the same, then the mix of wet effect and dry audio to be output to the track will be made louder or softer by exactly this volume. Of course, we are assuming that the wet only is not checked. Okay, stereo width. Set a parameter width of the reverb effect for stereo tracks only. Increasing this value applies more variation between left and right channels, creating more spacious effect. When set zero, the effect is applied independently to left and the right channels. And the last is the wet only. So basically when this control is checked, only the wet signal, what is the signal added by reverberation, will be in the resulting output. And the original audio will be removed. This can be useful when previewing the effect, but in most cases you should uncheck this when applying the effect. Wet only may be used, however, to create a reverb only track, then you can then mix in a greater or lesser proportion with the original track. So right now I just told you what every of these sliders do. Now when you want to work with reverb, you have multiple options. Or you will keep it at the default and you can just preview how it sounds. Great day everybody, welcome to Skill Up Dimension. And you can hear it's not so bad, so basically we could click on OK. But you have multiple options here. Basically, in the Audacity there are multiple factory presets for the reverb. 
You can find them in the manage and then go to factory presets. Here you can see the default. This is basically what is set when you open it. So this is what you can see is now the default. Nextly, you got here a lot of more presets for vocals one, two. Next, let's say you are in the bathroom, small room, bright, small room, dark, medium room, large room, church hall or cathedral. So let's just say we want to try the church hall. As you can see, the sliders just moved to the preset and let's preview it. Great day everybody, welcome to Skill Up Dimension. Okay, so this is it. This is the preset. You can or use the default options or you can set up your own levels. Depends on what you want to reach in the finals or you can use one of the factory presets that Audacity offers to you. Of course, when you will create one of your own preset, you can easily go to manage and save your preset. Uh, so let's say this is the best preset we just created. We'll go to manage, click on save let's say one to three we'll click ok and then anytime in the future when you will go and use again the reverb and you want to use your old preset the preset you once set up properly which fit you the most you will go to manage and use the presets and as you can see there is already our one two three preset okay now i showed you basically what all the sliders do and how you can manage create and save and use your own presets but let's actually use the reverb so let's say this is our audio track when you are using the reverb you have to take care that there is some kind of free space after your audio ends so what we need to do, we need to add some silence here. So let's say we will select this area till five seconds. And then we will go to generate and we will click on silence. And we'll click on OK. As you can see, the silence is generated. So we need basically the silence part because when some kind of echoes and other stuff from the reverb function will be created, if the audio would end here, it could just cut the audio effect. So this is why we are adding some kind of silence. Nextly, what you can do, but you don't have to, is duplicate this track. I will do it by select it all and click on Ctrl plus D. If you want to know more about the shortcuts in Audacity, simply click on, on one of our previous videos. But now, when you have two audio tracks, we will add effect only on one. So I will highlight the first audio track, then we'll go to effect and we will go to reverb. Because we duplicated the audio track, we want to set this selected audio track to wet only. Because when we will now add the reverb, we will listen only to the reverb which is added and not to the original audio as I said before. So let's use the factory default preset and let's listen how the default wet only sounds on our original audio. Uh, and as you can see right now, you could hear only the reverb. So this is basically why we duplicated the tracks. In the second track, you will have only your original audio. In the first track, you will have only your reverb. So basically then you can anytime in the future simply export only your reverb audio track or only export your original audio track or you can do anything you want. So let's just use it for the original audio. As you can see, the wave just changed and play it together. Great day everybody, welcome to Skill Up Dimension. You can hear that it sounds the same way as we could apply the reverb to this, but without the wet only. So as I said, there are two ways how you can use it. You can use it for one audio track only, or you can do it in this way as I showed you right now by using two audio tracks, one for original audio and one for reverb. Depends of course on your preferences and depends on what kind of project you are working on. Okay, but that is really all for this video. Thanks for watching, I hope I helped you. I hope you understood what reverb is and what does it actually do in Audacity. If you like this video, please hit like. If you want to support this channel, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want, you can become our patron on the Patreon Patreon page by what you can actually support this tutorial series at all. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's really all. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day and see ya at the next video. Goodbye.